Happy Monday, everybody, and happy week three of the chair design project. Um, hopefully you guys are plenty hyped by now after all the videos that we've watched and seen uh, hopefully what you would consider copious amounts of inspiration, different approaches. Um, hopefully you're getting pretty excited and starting to get really close to starting your final sketches, um, putting those perspective pages together and all that jazz. Um, obviously if you have any questions or if you're uh, concerned about um, any topics, any construction methods, any details, feel free to reach out. Um, Ellie and I are always available for the most part to answer your questions, look at your sketches and make uh, comments or give you feedback. So today's uh, lecture, we're gonna be designing this chair that you see on the screen. This is by a company called Blue Dot, spelled without an E, B-L-U-D-O-T. Um, they have a store here in Minneapolis, um, I know, and this is a really interesting chair. It's got some nice soft geometric, or sorry, soft organic qualities, and then it's got some more harsh um, geometric qualities. So nice contrast, fun stuff. Um, before we get into that, let's do a little bit of housekeeping stuff. So let's take a look here. Okay, so again, just so you know, this is the last week for assignment six. It is due Monday, April 27th in your Google Drive. And then we are gonna make an adjustment. So thank you guys for doing what you could with the PDF um, submission style. Um, I was hoping that was gonna go a little bit better than it did, but of course, reality doesn't always work the way that we wanted to. Um, and that's totally fine. So. If you guys can just take images of your work, that would be probably more helpful. Some of you guys already have done that where you submit a PDF and an image because we know that the construction lines when they're kind of light get lost pretty easily. Thank you. And now let's just transition to images only. So I'm sorry to have to pivot and to have you guys do something else, but um, I think this will probably work a little bit better. And then Ellie and I will just continue grading the same way we had before where we draw over your assignments and then give you a copy back. So just uh, another quick housekeeping note on taking an image. Let's look at these two little guys, little dudes here. So this guy on the left is comfortably taking a, a picture from a sitting natural sitting position as if they were watching a YouTube video or binging TikToks. And this is a no-no. We do not want this because then your drawing will come to us like this. Oops. In the photo. And then all of your nice perspective work that you've done will be destroyed, basically. And then we won't really be able to grade it and it'll be bad. But Guy number two, dude number two, uh, is uncomfortably taking a position, a picture in the correct, direct, like straight on way. And that's the way that you need to make sure that you take your pictures um, so that the perspective that you put all your work, hard time, sorry, hard work and time into looks really, really good and that we can grade it and give you the best score possible. And then, um, this is probably needless to say, but don't forget to try and have good lighting too, so that when you take your picture, it's not too dark or anything like that, because that'll make it harder for us as well. So maybe if you could take your picture during the day, um, not too far from a window, that would be nice and helpful, or like maybe between two lamps or something like that, that'd be probably pretty good. Okay. So I think that's all the general housekeeping stuff. I'm gonna make sure I'm still recording. Nice, okay. Now, let's jump in. Okay, so I have this. Start here. Okay, so this is the chair that we're going to be sketching. You can find it on Blue Dot's website. I think it's one of their like popular items or whatever. Um, let's figure out our composition. So let's imagine I have my 
paper here. Let's see. Let's imagine that we're doing one, um, one perspective view. Oh, and I think that include, yes, okay. It comes with an ottoman. Um, and I think that that would be fun to include too. Um, so let's aim for that. Okay, the first thing that comes to mind is like, what if we do a pretty heavy, like top view type deal? And even goes off the page just a wee bit. Got a little cushion there and another cushion there. And we've got our neat little legs. And bar, and other bar. And then the ottoman would be like that. I need to go hunt around for a better picture of that bottom end. Okay, there's one, one option. Let's look at another. Oops. Okay, another one could be, hmm, I actually kind of liked that one that we did. Um, okay, so the back of this chair would be a little bit more boring because I bet you it's pretty plain. Um, so I don't want to do a back view. A bottom view would be really cool, except we don't have, I checked our website, and we don't actually have any photos of the bottom, unfortunately. So as much as I would like to draw the bottom, be a little bit tough, given that we don't really have the information of what's going on, um, it'd probably be something like that. Get that little thing there. And then the ottoman would be like that probably. I don't really love that. It's kind of weird. Okay, what about a vertical orientation? Now vertical, I don't think would be super good for this chair because this chair is actually like really cubish in it's like general proportion. Um, so there'd be like a lot of white space, which like sometimes is really nice. Too bad. I kind of like this one more. Maybe we can just zoom in a bit uh, or like make the objects larger on the page to give it that like going off the page vibe because that's kind of nice. Okay, so let's aim for that. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my marker. Make sure it's really small, solid, and then I'm going to start off. Can we see that? Oops. Okay, let's start there. Alrighty, so um, first things first, let's try and understand this chair a little bit. So if I had to guess, I would say, so this isn't, we're not starting the composition. So you guys don't need to follow along quite yet. If this is the, the cube, oops, that our chair is gonna fit in, I almost feel as if that those back legs actually come in a fairly substantial amount, like that. And then those, those are definitely not vertical. They're totally like that. And then the front legs, the same thing. Not quite as, uh... okay, so there's that aspect. And then, for the actual uh, chair part, we've got 
rectangular prism. We've got some mass here. And then obviously have a back. The back, if you look at this view over here, definitely angles backwards quite a bit, which makes it probably pretty comfortable. I've never sat in one of these before, but I bet you they're pretty great. They look really nice. And that's probably too tall. Oh, and then these look like they come in too, in towards the center. Yeah, that's actually probably a bit closer. I think it's somewhere in between there. Yeah, okay. And then our arms, they kind of like swoop up from here. And then they're pretty like gentle before they curve in over here. So really something kind of like that. And then after that, we'll just build in those little parts where they connect, the bars. Okay, so I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of um, how this is constructed. We're gonna do the cushions as well. Those, um, we did a little bit of cushion stuff the last video or two, um, but we can talk a little bit about those. Guy would love to just be able to like, okay guys, before the end of class, remind me, we need to talk about cushions, but none of you are here with me. So I'm gonna make a note to myself, not digitally, so that I remember cushions. Okay, so I'm going to erase that because that was just um, for us to figure out the general shape and form. Um, how to subtract it from a cube and all that jazz. So now, let's get started with the chair. So I want my front edge, or the bottom of the legs, to be somewhere around there maybe. And then I want it to go this way. And then that'll be the back. Ooh, that's probably way too big. Okay. Maybe something more like that. Up, up. Because I do want it to go like off the page, but I don't want to lose the whole thing. So maybe I'll actually bring it down. Okay, that's good. And then I want my ottoman too. So if this is the bottom of the ottoman, I think the ottoman is pretty rectangular. So all of these lines are going to a vanishing point. Oops. Way over there. And then I have my other lines going to a vanishing point way over there. But then I'll bring this up. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit of the um, angling out, like there's a, a third vanishing point way down there. Okay, so let's get started with the chair. So I think I'm going to do the equivalent of pushing just a little bit harder. I'm going to darken my a bit. So I'm going to do the same thing. This is going to be that front point where the leg hits the ground. So I'm going to say that that angles in a bit, goes there, this thing will go over there. And to make sure they're both equal, the same height, I'll use this reference line and I'll draw the tube. So this is going to be a cylinder. And then I can use my box to make sure I use the right perspective for the ellipses that represent the bottom of the feet. And then those kind of end 
Um, so I'll use that reference line to show where they end. Okay, so there's the front two feet. That might actually be a little bit thicker and a little bit taller. little bit better. There's a straight horizontal bar that attaches these two, a little below the top. Okay, and then how does that actually attach? Okay, so great opportunity. So we have a cylinder with a horizontal bar going across. So now what do we do? So we know that based on the profile of the cylindrical shape, that this line is gonna be parallel to this line or this line right here. And then for this one over here, it's gonna follow this line. So we need to imagine there being another line right here. So it'll follow that curvature and intersect just like that. So if I were to zoom in, we're gonna follow that line and give that some thickness. There we go. Cool. Okay. There's that. And now I'm going to do the back line. So again, I'm pretty confident that this chair, like from a bottom view, is actually kind of like that. Like that. So I'm gonna make sure that I take that into consideration. I think I didn't do the proportions quite right. I'm gonna bring this back this way. So now our our next, our feet are gonna end up over there. And probably about there. Okay. Now those are quite a bit shorter, but angled a little bit more. So I'm gonna try something like that maybe and I'm gonna imagine from a side view that the feet are actually parallel the way that the feet start and stop are actually parallel with the ground just for simplicity's simplicity's sake excuse me so again from a side view kind of imagining something like this where it's parallel with the ground. That way, when we make these boxes, or when we draw these ellipses, it's easy because they're parallel with the ground and therefore we can use a simple box like that to create them. So there's one. I'm gonna try and basically match that size come up a bit. Same thing over here. And I can check these to make sure they're the same with a line like that. Looks pretty good. Okay, so let's let me make sure this is nice and dark. Okay, so basically same thing. I'm gonna put a radius on there, bring that over and down. Make sure this line and this line are basically parallel. Okay, and this back one I'm not gonna do quite yet because I think it might very well disappear. Now, I think it's time that we can go ahead and create the box for our, uh, the, if this is like a leather, I have no idea actually. Um, go ahead, draw that. So, okay, this bottom edge looks really, really swoopy. So we know the, the front of these arms are pretty small, 
Maybe like that. And then the chair comes back. Like this. You should see that. And then especially when we put the radii in there. The back comes back like this. And it's probably about this tall. Maybe. I think the thickness of these is still a little small, to be honest. I think the height is pretty close. Maybe it could go down a little bit further. It's kind of hard to say. Okay, so let's bring this in gently. That is going to go off the page a bit, which I'm happy about. Okay, and then these. back this oh um i didn't say as explicitly i would like you guys following along practicing how to draw this chair um that'd be great okay so something didn't work out quite right what's going on here i think this line here is not going to the vanishing point appropriately Maybe that should actually come in a little bit. Yeah, that's better. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty close. And that'll work for us. Okay, so yeah, so now looking at this fourth leg, it's totally going to disappear. So it's a good thing that we did not go ahead and do all that because that would have definitely been lost. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put that front edge in here. This big, oops, too big. Curved front part where the chair begins. Okay, cool. And then we can look at these details over here to kind of get an idea that there's something like this. And then we're going to mirror that on this side and go up. And then we move that. Get something a little more like that. That feels better. And then we go up at an angle pretty gently and then put a nice curve there connection you can test make sure we're going the same direction okay and then we know the back end of this thing is pretty curved put a big curve there. Alright. And then these guys will need to be a gentle transition as well. Kind of like that. And then these also the back one kind of disappeared. And then that has a little bit of a, it kind of jumps up just a bit. Okay. So for some reason, this arm is looking a little higher than the other one. So that may be because the chair is like angled backwards and then it also comes in at the same time. So, I'm going to bring that down just a bit to make it feel more equal. And yeah, that already feels way better. Okay. Now, let's look at this piece, the metal piece down here. I forgot to 
and do those arrows. Okay. So, um, this curve right here is going to come back and finish the bottom of the chair for us, like so. Okay, so here's the top of our bar, and there's the bottom of our bar. Basically, we're going to put a radius in there, and then that'll come up. Radius, boom. So originally that was just like a rectangular adding a rectangular prism, like that to that spot, and then putting those circles in there. Quarter of a circle, these guys. So then that will disappear. And so from a side view, or a, a set, uh, ooh, holy cow. A surface contour line would just appear like this. Okay. So now I would say we could probably go ahead and start our cushions. Um, I'm going to reduce this down a bit. Or all, whoops. Yeah. So it's easier to see what's going on. And then I'll darken my pen again. And let's give this a more concrete line. Okay, and then if you want to get just a little bit stylish with it, and you want some um, some lines that kind of flare out a bit, that's okay. As long as it's clean and intentional. Okay. Now, we'll get to some of the stitching related stuff later as kind of like the end details. But right now, so we made this line here, right? Now we need to pretend that that has some mass. So if we were to imagine taking advantage of that vanishing line and pretending that there's material added there, that's what we're about to do. So I'm really gonna just draw a line that kind of gently begins, and then gets darker, follows this around, goes down, and just kind of disappears. Because it's a very gentle transition, uh, as you can see in this area, or like even over here. And we'll show more detail on that through the surface um, contour lines. Now on that side, the far side, it's actually not really like relevant to try and put something there. Um, so we'll just leave it, but there's obviously space, you know, behind this, I could put something back here. So that's why we definitely want this line. Okay. So I would say, I'm trying to think about which I'm going for the cushions now. So which would I start with? I think you'd start with either the butt or the back. But definitely not the like lumbar support, the little, the little guy. Um, so let's do the butt first. So basically, I'm imagining that that cushion is really just a thin rectangular prism, like that. That is just really, really curvy on these sides, like this, and then it has a big kind of curve to it too. So that's about what I'm going to try and draw here. And I'm not going to go through the trouble of drawing the entire box because it's very organic. I feel pretty comfortable 
that I can just Kind of do one of these. And then imagining the top left part of that box. And I think it would have a, it will have a pretty big radius back here. And then kind of like that. And then this I think got away from me a little bit. Because I want I think the center would be about here and then we're going to come up and down so i've already started to curve this too far because it needs to be about tangent right there so i'm going to try that again hmm i think i oops may have been wrong about the center. I think it might actually be over a bit. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Okay. That line is really, really bumpy, not intentionally. Okay, cool, there's that. And now we don't have, Let's see, let's check out the views. It's hard to tell exactly how the back seat actually comes in to meet this. So I'm gonna kind of um, just kind of guess, honestly, and put it in front of the other one. And you know what, I actually don't like that. I think it probably comes back further. Yeah, that feels better. Ooh, you know what? No. I think what actually happened is I put it too far back. I think this whole line should actually be more like that. Yeah, yep, yep, okay. And then I think this line I was wrong too. I think it needs to come out further. I'm just gonna allow this like that. Okay, and I think the center of this would be somewhere around here, but I'm gonna stop because of that little lumbar pillow. And I think that that is just kind of like a little chunky thing. And then I think this actually comes back a little more. Okay, not the best, but I think that'll work. And then this guy. Okay, what would that actually look like? Then would that go? Excuse me. Okay, so because this and this don't align perfectly, it looks like my little pillow is kind of too far to the right. But that's okay, I'm not super concerned about that. Okay, 
So that's pretty much the body of this thing done. Uh, very swoopy, of course, very um, organic and not too complicated. Um, but the stitching that we're gonna do is gonna make it feel a little bit more realistic. So it looks like if you look at the front edge of the bottom, not the cushion, but the actual seat itself, it sort of starts at the bottom and then we'll almost follow this exact line that we created for the most part and then hit like over here, basically that exact structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a line down that'll represent that stitching. Okay, so there's part of it. And I'm gonna do the back or the bottom. Okay, let me drop that back around a little further. Okay, now there's that. And we should kind of be able to see that stitching go all the way up the back. And I think it kind of disappears behind. Okay. And then I don't think we actually can even see it on that side. So I'm actually basically going to do the same thing. And this is just going to discontinue around the bottom edge. But then one detail that we do have is this, it's almost like the, the armpit in a way. Um, it like comes around. So let's put and meets this other stitching. And I think honestly, I think it's about here. I'm gonna put that in. So that's that stitching. And then on the other side, I think it honestly just kind of be like that. It would show that um, curvature, that geometry. So this is almost like a, a um, surface line, a surface contour line. Erase that a bit. Okay. Although one thing to know is that if I did a reference line, those are definitely not similar to one another. But I like the placement of that one so I'm actually gonna redo this. So, I think it actually be kind of like there. Yeah, that, no, not quite, a little bit more. Yeah, that feels better. Okay, sweet. Now I can go over my uh, legs. I am gonna go ahead and make them a little bit larger and taller than I originally had them. I can kind of use the same ellipses as references and just make them bigger. I'll do the same thing here. Just a little bit bigger. Okay. Now let's work on this. That ellipse won't, or that uh, line won't change much. Okay, same thing over here. Put in this gentle curve. This comes down. And then this, we will actually see the bottom of that a little bit. So that we can expect to be there. Okay, one thing to note, it looks like those are almost like what we would call like coplanar. 
I think in reality, that line would actually be up a bit, just for reference. And that comes up. Curved line there, because we're following this line here. And then we can just imagine this line, that line. Although, no, that's wrong, because we need to imagine, so if I were to use my light pencil, low pressure, we know that it actually needs to go this way. Back here. Let's jump back here with our heavier pencil. Like so. And that's much more realistic. Okay. Cool. So now let's go ahead and go over this with our um, darkest marks, our darkest line weight to show what's on the outside, what's a leading edge line. I'm gonna make sure this is like kind of smooth for you guys to see. Okay, don't lose your stitching. Okay. And then this we know is going to be gradual, but then get dark, dark, and then gradual, disappear. Okay, the cushions have space behind them and the chair itself. Make sure that's nice and heavy. Same thing. We want to be able to show that little like interaction there. Hopefully that makes sense. So where the cushion goes back and where the chair arm stops. That's what we're showing there. Top. Oops. And then our little pillow. And you guys can definitely put um, pillows and cushions and stuff on your chairs. Again, we're gonna talk a little bit about those later. If I remember, hopefully I do. Okay, and then we're gonna have a leading edge line here and here. That was bad. Put a radius here. And then this is gonna go from dark to light, or gradual, sorry. Same thing here. Okay, and now this is actually a good moment to pause and think for a second. So this metal might actually be a part going oops, inside. Rough drawing for a second. The metal, in which case this would be a leading edge line, but there's a chance the manufacturer casted this whole metal frame, and so it's actually just a intersection, like two faces meeting one another like so, and so you don't need a leading edge line here. So it, it's hard to say. I don't know how they constructed it, so I can't really tell. We'll just leave it. Back. 
and boom. There we go. Oh, okay, we didn't do actually the stitching on the cushions. Okay, so we can see one line of uh, stitching on the small pillow that looks like it just runs around the outside of that thing. And so because we're above the horizon line, oops, we might see just a little bit of it. And then this is around halfway and then it curves around. So I'm gonna give it the back side. Oh yeah, that already feels a little bit nicer. So then it's almost as if our front edge is somewhere like right there. I'm actually just gonna put some little like kind of fabric-y sort of details in there. Less, or what's the phrase I'm looking for? More is less in this sort of situation. And then let's do the cushion on the, the butt cushion. So I think this one is gonna be somewhere around like there and then come back around. Get rid of that straight line. And then I think that is gonna impact the surface contour line here. I think it's gonna actually bump out a bit because this looks like it comes out. And in all honesty, it might actually impact this right here too where yeah it actually like has you can see it coming around the edge okay so now um the next thing we have to do is the drop shadow before we go on to the ottoman so i'm going to push the ottoman fairly far away so like if the ottoman was like here, I'd want to do the ottoman first because obviously my drop shadow is going to be impacted, but I'm going to push it kind of far out, I think. So it's a little bit, there's not as much overlap as there could be. So for us, our, okay, so these arms are bent. So I'm basically just going to draw a line here, bows out a bit there. back whoops there we go and then here just kind of goes that way and like I try and tell you guys just some really simple 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 straight lines Nothing fancy at all. Boom. Tear's done. Okay, so let's take a look at the ottoman. So we only have two, like, almost orthographic views. It's a little bit tough to see, honestly. I'm going to erase that for now. Make sure. Oops. That's back up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to imagine, once again, I think that actually needs to be... Well, why does it seem so dark? What happened? Oh. There we go. Okay. I think this actually needs to come out a little further. That's almost too light. Oh yeah. There. That makes sense. Okay. Cool. And then as far as the proportion goes, I think it might actually even come out a little bit further.
So then, and it doesn't, as far as like how high it is, it almost looks in line with this, making me think that like this line is pretty correct, which would make it come out this way. Oh, it does look kind of wide. Hmm. Maybe I was wrong. Eh, let's just give that a shot. Okay. So this cushion actually looks pretty thick in comparison to the chair itself. So let's give that an actual pretty big depth. Imagine where that other line is. And then this is very, very swoopy. It's got, it bows down a little bit. Like so. And then pretty serious. Radius. Radii. Right here. Okay, and then it's basically got the same exact features, um, even on the same sides. So if there is a, a foot here, looks like we're gonna go up this way. And then have the metal parts coming out of here. And we're follow this line and that will give us our thickness probably have a foot something like that and then it has that part here part here part here Um, a lot of that is actually like missing, like from our view. Um, there's a bar here. But generally I think if we drop this back down to where we had it before. I think let's just go ahead and drop this in. So this is again very very swoopy leg there's that bar that come up that side's done this will be a leading edge sign that will become gradual that's going to be a leading edge line soft. Okay, now let's put, there's just like the tiniest little bit of stitching. Um, I'm basically going to exaggerate that a little bit. to 
to match the other stuff. Okay, and then um, all that's left is I'm going to finish off the surface lines. So I think this cushion kind of does something like that. And then the arms do something like that. And boop. That. I think this is going to come out like that. Boom, boom. Oh, you know what? This would be wrong, actually. Because if this is here, I want that to be more like that. Yeah. That feels a little, well, no, now it's too sharp. Too sharp here. There we go. And then this guy. Oh, is there a, oh, there is. I almost forgot. This guy has some stitching too. And then this comes back and around. Back and around. Okay. And the arm in. Again, super, super rounded. Boop. And then it's gonna dip down in the center. Boop. Come in. That. It's gonna come out like that, slightly at an angle, and then don't forget that. Okay. And then the drop shadow. It's gonna be very, very basic. Just a big rectangle made of lines. Okay, boom. Here is our final sketch. I'm gonna say this is the, this has a real name. I'll call it the blue dot chair. It's like a lounge chair or something. And then of course I'm gonna put, whoops, put my name in the bottom right corner. Um, okay, I've got those, those are those. Don't like that. I'm gonna say, let's see what do I want. Uh, fabric. This is fabric. This is metal. I'm just going to say cushion. Um, I think there's another little like. I'm gonna put those little like very very subtle like textury kind of uh, indicators basically. Okay, there's our chair, and I remembered to talk about cushions. Cool. 
Okay, so um, now we've gone over office slash swivel chairs that have wheels on them. Am I still recording? Okay. Uh, that have wheels on them. We've talked about um, drills. Uh, we've talked about ideating around a chair from a piece of furniture as a reference. Now we've drawn an ergonomic and fabric chair, uh, if fabric and metal. If there's any other kind of chairs that you guys would like to see me do that, you know, definitely don't fit like um, anything that I've sketched before, um, let me know. And then I can do a demo of a chair that you think I haven't really covered or you don't feel confident about. Um, that would be cool. I could help you guys. Um, but yeah, so I think, or I think, I know on your assignment, you have to do two perspective sketches of your chair per page. Um, so this isn't the perfect example, but um, obviously it's kind of big, so it's helpful for you guys to see like at least a composition that you could try or play with, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's talk about cushions for just a second. So obviously the cushions here are very round, very like gentle, soft or whatever. But if you guys want to try your own um, cushions, that's fine too. So like, you know, let's say you have like a more squarish form. I don't know, something like this. You know, you might have those um, stitches or I don't really know a lot of the right terminology for like fabric and stuff, but you know, maybe you've got your stitching for lack of, that's just what I, I'm calling it, you know, around here. That's totally cool. And then if you want to add like the most tiny, tiny little textural details, you know, maybe you've got like a pillow or something that's really, really, really big and kind of lumpy. Um, maybe something like that. And you want just like a, just the tiny, tiny littlest bit of like explaining what this is with more than just a word. And you just want like, that's almost too much already. I don't like that. That's too much. You know, maybe there's a pillow or a cushion. And there's the drop shadow. I'm trying to forget your drop shadows, guys. Um, maybe you want a pillow with some tufting because somehow that is becoming a trend again. I'm not sure what happened there. I am personally not a fan of tufting. My soap is at home have them because we couldn't find one that didn't. Uh, maybe it's got some like buttons. There's an appropriate, like, kind of tufting sort of thing. And then if you were to put in, like, your surface contour line, you know, maybe it's like, boop, boop, boop. And then from the side, it'd be like, jump, jump. Something like that. Um, let's see. Pillows, cushions. Hold on, I think I had... Let's, let's take a second. Chair cushions. Hey, what have I not sketched or drawn? Okay, this would be really difficult. I might shine, I might caution you away from something quite like that. Um, Mm. 
Okay, I feel like a lot of these are still fairly geometric, honestly. Like, it's easy to see how, you know, this is a rectangular prism, this is a rectangular prism. Um, maybe, like, lounge chair. What about lounge chairs? Those usually get a little funkier. No, that's not what I meant. Modern? Yeah, still pretty geometric, honestly. I don't think there's anything in here you guys can't handle. Um, so basically, yeah, I think you should be fine as long as you don't go nuts. So yeah, try something simple. Um, as, try something simple for the cushions, not necessarily the... Um, the chair okay so I think that's what I've got oh I did see one okay let's say real quick you have a chair some oh that was bad oh my gosh like this and then you've got your cushion sitting on top, and the stitching is somewhere like this. Now what if there's like some ties or something? I would say like, you can keep those a little bit more like styled, if you will. Keep it like really simple. Yeah, don't go nuts with these either. Because like trying to trying to sketch like a fabric thing is pretty tough um, when you're trying to do something that's realistic, like what we're aiming for. Um, so be wary of that too. Okay, I think that's what I've got. Um, yeah, let me know, please, because there's only one demo left between now and the time that you're turning in assignment six to ask questions uh, for me to, like, create or imp implement in the other demo. You can ask questions, obviously, up until Monday afternoon. Um, and then, yeah, so hopefully this was informative for you guys. Um But yeah, here's the chair. See you all 